The December SAT is in just three days, and if you sell this test, you'll need to wait almost four months for another chance. Luckily, the YouTube algorithm has led you to some of the hardest SAT math questions out there. So let's lock in and see how many you can get correct. Oh, and if you're wondering where we get these questions from, check out prephubtp.com for 150 more insanely difficult SAT math questions. All right, guys, let's jump right into our first question. The table shows values of x and their corresponding values of y for three points on line j in the xy plane. This is the table. Line k also lies in the xy plane and is defined by the equation y equals 4x. At what point x, y do lines j and k intersect? So the first thing we're going to need to do is to find the equation for line j. So line j is going to have this form. y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. And how we're going to find m and b is to use this table. So one way we can use, or one way we can find m is to take two of the y values, subtract them from each other, and take those corresponding, the respective x values and subtract them from each other. So in this case, we can take we can take any of these three points. So for y2 and x2, we can um, let's use this this point down here. So we will use 2 right here. And then for y1, we can use any of these. I'll use negative 10. So minus negative 10. And on the bottom, x2 will be this value right here, could because it will correspond to this original y2 value. And it's gonna need to we're gonna need to subtract the x value, so zero. So when you this this becomes simplified, it comes out to be 12 over 2, which is equal to 6. So the slope of line j is going to be equal to 6. So we know so far that y is equal to 6x plus b. So now we need to find the y-intercept. The y-intercept of the, of the line will be the value where x is equal to 0. So we, in the table, we see that when x is equal to 0, y is equal to negative 10. So we can plug in negative 10 as b. So the line j can be, line j comes out to be y equals 6x minus so now that we have line j and we are given line k to be y equals 4x, we need to find this point x, y, where j and k, in, where lines j and k intersect. So how we can do this is to set the equations equal to each other. When the equations are equal to each other, the x and y value, one set of x and one set of x and y values will be able to be plugged into both equations and come out. So we need to set y equals 4x equal to y equals 6x minus 10. So how I would do this is to substitute y equals 4x here and put the 4x right here. So I'll have 4x equals 6x minus 10 because I used 4x because this is equal to y. I used 4x and plugged it into this. And to do some simple algebra right here and finish this off, I will bring the 10 over to this side and add 10 to both sides. So 4x plus 10 is equal to 6x. And now subtract 4x from each side. So that will become 10 equals 2x. And x comes out to be. So now that we know that x is equal to 5, we can plug it back into either of the equations that we found. So if we plug 5 back into this equation right here, y is going to be 4 times 5, which is equal to 20. So we have found our answer. x, y will be 5, 20. And so the answer is a. So for our next question, 
it's a question type that is actually very common on the SAT. And it looks complicated, but a lot of the work has already been done for us. And there's a rule that you're going to have to memorize for future SATs. So let's read the question. In the given equation, k is a constant. The equation has exactly one real solution. What is the value of k? And the equation is given as x squared plus the square root of k minus 3x plus 42 is equal to 0. So this equation is going to be given in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And this will be useful later and when we, when we are trying to apply these rules. So the problem says that the equation has exactly one real solution. When you look over at the rules, when there is one real solution, b squared minus 4ac is going to be equal to 0. So in this case, b squared minus 4ac of this equation, when that is equal to 0, there is one real solution. So let's set b squared minus 4ac equal to 0 and plug in a and b from our equation. So for b squared, b is going to be this value right here. So square root of k minus 3, all squared, minus 4, a is going to be, there's an apply, implied 1 right here. So it's going to be 1. And then c, the c value right here, is going to be here, 42. So 42. So when we come out, and this, according to the rules, will come out to be 0 when there is one real solution to this. So when we simplify this, it will come out to be k minus 3 minus 4 times 42 is 168. is all equal to 0 and to finally find k we can move we can add 3 and add 168 to both sides that will, and so k will come out to be 171 so the answer is also a remember to um, review these rules before your next SAT moving on to our next question the functions f g and h are defined as shown right here if f, f of x times g of x minus h of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constants, what is the value of b? So how we're going to do this is just plug in and simplify. And, and it will come out to be in this format ax squared plus bx plus c. And we can, then we can use that um, expression to find a, b, and c. So right here, the first part of this is f of x times g of x. So we're going to do 2x plus 3, which is f of x. Multiply that with g of x, which is 7x minus 2. And subtract that from h of x. 5x plus 6. This expression will eventually come out to be in the format ax squared plus bx plus c. So how we're going to do this is um, multiply the outsides first. So it will be 14x squared. And then um, add the insides right here. It will be 3 times 7 is 21, so 21x. And then multiply this one and the, and the front one. So 2x times negative 2, so minus 4x. And then 3 times negative 2 will be negative 6. And then simplify this right here. So it will come out to be minus 5x minus 6. So now we, we need to simplify this even further. x squared, and this, this, um, this expression right here is the only one with the x squared. So we can leave that alone. And then group, we, next, for the, our next step needs to be to group all the x's together. So we have this 21x right here, this minus 4x right here, and this minus 6x, 5x right here. So this will come out to be 21x minus 9x, 
which is 12x plus 12x. And then this negative 6 and negative 6, we can add those together to be negative 12. So now, as you can see, it has come out to be in this format. So a is equal to 14, b is equal to 12, and c is also equal to 12. So now it's asking for the value of b, 12 right here. So the answer is b. Now for our next question, the function h is defined by h of x is equal to a to the power of x plus b, where a and b are positive constants. The graph of y equals h of x in the xy plane passes through the points 0, 10, and 2, 3. I mean 2, 13. What is the value of a, b? So what I would do here is plug in these two points and eventually find a and b, and then in the end multiply them together to find your answer. So the first thing we're going to do is plug in 0, 10 into this equation. So 10 will, will replace h of x because h of x is equal to y, and y 10 is the y value. So this will be 10, 10, um, this will be a to the power of, and this x value is 0, plus b. Since anything to the power of 0 is 1, 10 is going to be equal to 1 plus b, and so b is equal to 9. Now that we know b is equal to 9, we can plug in the second point. So 13, we plug that in as h of x. So 13 is equal to a to the power of x, which in this case is 2, plus b, which we now know is 9. So now we know that a squared is equal to 4, after subtracting 9 from both sides here. And since a has to be a positive constant, a is going to be equal to 2. So now we know both, both the values of a and b. b is equal to 9 and a, equal, a is equal to 2. So what is the value of a, b? We multiply these together, and that becomes 18. So the answer is b. This practice problem, the function f is defined by f of x is equal to 56 times 0 0.19 to the power of x. For any positive integer n, the value of f of n is p percent less than the value of f to f of n minus 1. What is the value of p? So what I would do here is to plug in two numbers um, as n which will be plugged in as x. So the two, the two numbers I would choose are 1 and 0. So first we plug in 0. So f of 0 would be 56 times 0 0.19 to the power of 0 which will be, since 0 0.19 to the power of 0 is 1, 56 times 1 is 56. Now for, the, for f of 1, this will come out to be 56 times 0 0.19 to the power of 1. This will come out to be 56 times 0 0.19. So it's saying for any positive integer n, the value of f of n is p percent less than the value of f of n minus 1. So in this case, f n is equal to 1 right here. So f of n right here is some percentage, p percentage, less than this value right here f of n minus 1 since n is 1 f of 0 is 56 and when you look at these two numbers 56 and 56 times 0 0.19 you see that 56 times 0 0.19 is much smaller exactly how much smaller exactly 81 percent smaller because there is an implied 1.00 right here and when you compare the sizes of these two quantities 
this number right here, which is f of n, turns out to be 81% less than this quantity right here. So the answer is going to be 81.